Hi everyone. In this video, we will start looking at problems with a finite sum structure and look at a particular example of that problem called the empirical risk minimization. Let us start by writing down the problem formulation. We consider the finite sum formulation, which takes the form x star is equal to arg min over x capital F of x, which is defined as 1 over n summation over i from 1 to n f of x comma xi i, where xi i belongs to some set d and f takes inputs from v and d and takes real values. Uh, it is a proper closed function in x. As you can see, this is an unconstrained optimization problem where the objective has a particular finite sum structure. We can solve it using the gradient descent method whose updates take the form xt plus 1 equal to xt minus eta over n summation from i equal to 1 to n gradient of f of xt comma xi i. However, the finite sum structure often arises in many applications where n is large. For these settings, even the gradient descent is not viable because the calculation of the gradient of the objective function requires us to calculate the gradient of each of its n components and then average them. So the complication then requires us to look beyond the gradient descent and its variance. In particular, we want algorithms that do not require us to look at every sum end and instead look at maybe one of the sum ends per iteration in this objective function. This brings us to the issue of measuring the oracle complexity. Recall that so far we have been operating under the assumption that we have access to the first order oracle that gives us gradient of capital F of x. However, when n is large, that is not necessarily a reasonable assumption. Instead, for finite sum problems, we will consider a different oracle which gives us gradient of f of x comma xi i for any x and i. This is called the incremental first order oracle. Short form is IFO. But this new definition of oracle means that we need new algorithms that have good IFO complexity. A key point is that an algorithm with good first order oracle complexity need not have a good IFO complexity. For instance, let f of x comma xi i be L smooth and mu strongly convex. Then the best algorithm we know so far is the accelerated gradient descent. We know that the first order complexity of accelerated gradient descent. If we calculate its IFO complexity, we will get order of n times square root of L over mu log of 1 by epsilon, where we have multiplied by n because the accelerated gradient descent requires gradient at every iteration and evaluation of the gradient requires capital N calls to the IFO. It turns out that this is not the best IFO complexity. In fact, we will later see that it is possible to improve over this IFO complexity when N is large. In particular, the key culprit is the factor N that is multiplying it and we will see algorithms where this factor is not there or is considerably reduced. As an example of the finite sum structure, let us consider the prediction problem or the supervised learning problem, which arises in the context of machine learning. Let capital X and capital Y be two random variables coming from the joint distribution P of X, Y. However, only X is available for observation and we want to learn a predictor function M that tells us Y given X. So as a simple example, X could contain information extracted from an image and then Y could denote the label of that image. So this is the general prediction problem. Usually we do not want to search over all possible functions or mappings and instead we restrict ourselves to smaller, more regular classes of functions. One such class of function is the parameterized form where H is parameterized by a vector. In other words, we say that M belongs to calligraphic H, which is the set of all functions of the form H of dot comma X, where X is a vector in Rn. So the X denotes the parameters and H is a known function. In the simplest case, we have the linear functions, which are of the form 
h of w comma x equal to w transpose x. We measure how good or bad a prediction is using a loss function. For a given parameter x, the prediction for a random variable x is given by h of capital X comma small x. And the actual label is y. So the loss function is given by L of h of x comma x comma y. The loss is such that it is small when the label y is close to its predicted label h of capital X comma small x. So once we have fixed the form of the function h and the loss function, we need to find the parameters x such that h of dot comma x can be used to make predictions for y. The goal of supervised learning is to find x that minimizes the expected risk which is given by r of x equal to expected value of the loss evaluated at h of capital x comma x comma y where the expectation is taken with respect to the random variables x and y. This is called the risk minimization problem. A central issue in minimizing r of x is that the joint distribution p of x y is not known. Therefore, the expectation cannot be calculated using integration. Instead, only a sequence of n independent identically distributed xi comma yi samples that are drawn from p x y are available to us and that is called the training data. So with this restriction in mind, we have to resort to minimizing the empirical risk which is given by Rn of x equal to 1 over n summation over i from 1 to n L of h evaluated at xi comma small x comma yi which is basically a good approximation to the expected loss function from the law of large numbers. The empirical risk minimization problem or the ERM problem can be seen as a practical alternative to the risk minimization problem. Because the ERM problem relies on the law of large numbers, the caveats associated with the law of large numbers also apply. The empirical risk is only an approximation to the expectation and the approximation will ne not necessarily be good if n is not large. So to even use ERM, we need to ensure that n is very large. In practice, we do various tricks such as regularization in order to cover up for this limitation. There are other situations where LLN does not apply. The ERM would not make sense in those situations. For instance, when the distribution of the loss function is very heavy tailed, then the second moment may not exist. So the law of large numbers does not apply. In that case also, we should not be using the ERM formulation. You can see that the ERM problem has a finite sum structure. We can collect xi as xi comma yi and denote f of x comma xi equal to L of h of xi comma x comma yi. A widely used parameterization of h is that in the neural networks where we make use of a composite form. Suppose we are given the data x and y. The neural networks make use of a composite loss function which is evaluated at as follows. So starting at x0 which is simply the data x, there are many layers in the neural network and each layer evaluates x of j which is given by s of wj into x of j minus 1 plus bj for all j from 1 to capital J. And the final h of x comma x is given by the x of j which is evaluated at the last layer. Here let small x collect the parameters wj comma bj for all j and s is the so called activation function. They are non-linear and examples include the rectified linear unit which is called ReLU or the sigmoid function. So the reason behind this composite form is used is twofold. In many problems this form with lots of layers is good at representing a wide class of maps from x to y. So these are called deep neural networks and are widely used in the many many contexts. 
and the second is that the calculation of the stochastic gradient for a given data point is not very complicated and can be done using the chain rule for differentiation which is carry out, carried out using the back propagation routine so the downside is that that makes the loss non convex for x so it is not necessarily easy to minimize mostly researchers in various domains such as computer vision speech signal processing time series prediction have come up with various neural network architectures that are best suited to those particular domains so the overall the neural network design is an active area of research and is very domain specific and involves uh, design deciding how each of the layers should be we will not look at neural network architectures at all here because we are mostly concerned with general algorithms that work with all kinds of non convex objective functions but it is important to realize that the research in erm is to a certain extent fueled by recent advances in neural networks so that is all for this video we have detailed the empirical risk minimization problem and in the next video we will look at the stochastic gradient descent method for solving it